welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. I'm Maggie Keramidas and my mission is to inspire you to rise up, grow, stand out and take action towards the next level of your life. I interview leaders, influencers, entrepreneurs, authors, exceptional people who can and will inspire you to improve your life. Tune in for two episodes each week and make sure you subscribe to the podcast to get the episodes as soon as they are released. In today's show, it is my real pleasure to speak with Chris Marhevka. Chris, you are the CEO and facilitator at Training Camp for the Soul and also of the Embodied Man Leadership Retreats. Before you came into this healing work, you had over 10 years of experience in entrepreneurship, uh, growing and selling two-figure companies, among other things. You have extensive experience as a coach in health, mindset, leadership, business, wellness, and your passion is leading people onto a path where they can confront their past and accelerate their growth. Chris, uh, it is a real pleasure to to speak with you today, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to our conversation. Thank you for having me on, Aki. I am so excited for this. So am I. And uh, as I was telling you earlier before we hit record, it is uh, topics that I also have very much personal interest. The door, interest, interest is not the right word. Fascination is more, more of uh, the word. <laughs> uh, Chris, I would like to start with uh, going back a little bit and giving us uh, some of your stories, some of your background. So mm-hmm. can you take us back to... Before you say that you were, Mm -hmm. you know, growing on your personal development, but you kept on having the same challenges over Mm -hmm. and over again. So can you take us back to that time so we can understand uh, better? Yeah, absolutely. I I, to give the big context, Mm -hmm. I'm 35 years old. And for the first 32 years of my life, I was living um, under one script. And then right around 32 is when I did a lot of deeper work that really shifted who I was and how, how I saw the world and how I saw myself. So it was like up until 32, um, a lot of my life was driven around um, material success. It was driven around um, the quote unquote American dream of the, the house with the white picket fence and the, the family and the, <laughs> the good income and the well. And, and so um, I, 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 I learned that to get those things took, uh, took learning, it took an education, it took working really hard. And I got really good at those two things. I got really good at learning information. I got really good at working really hard. Those were driving forces for me. And I proved it. And I, I proved it in everything that I did. I was like, I was always going to be the hardest worker. And I was the hardest worker in school, I was the hardest worker in sports. I was the hardest worker when I came out of school and I, I uh, started as an entrepreneur. I was just like, I won't be outworked. And so I just kept working. And it led me to accomplish most of the things that I said I wanted to in my whole entire life by the time I was 30 years old. And I had all the things. I checked all the boxes. Mm-hmm. And um, there was there was it was actually right around my 30th birthday because that was right when I got married. It was right when, um, my, my business hit a million for the first time. Um, and I remember sitting down and, and like looking to set my goals for the next year. Cause I, this was a process that I did every year, um, for, for well over a decade. Mm-hmm. And I was there and I was, I was like, okay, what, what do I uh, want to accomplish? And I remember thinking, I'm like, wow, I've accomplished all of the things that were told to me that would, li- that would make the greatest life ever. Mm. And I'm sitting here just thinking of more. I'm, I'm like, okay, now how can I do more of this? And there was something that clicked for me that was, um, maybe it's not about more of what I've been doing. Maybe there's something different out there <laughs> that, mm-hmm. I've, that, that, that I, I've been seeking these certain things, but maybe there's something different. And that was the first question that sparked a change in the way that I um, 
started doing personal development and started changing myself. And the, the, the what was sparked mm -hmm. was more of a sense of guiding life from my heart and my mm -hmm. true desires and uh, from purpose and from mission and from love than of this mental processing of like, what does other people think I should do? Or, or, or what do I think would uh, paint me in the best light? Or what would get the most things and toys in the garage? Mm -hmm. um, and those are all things that were taught to me. And I didn't question until that moment. And then that's when I started to question it. Um, and um, up until that point, I had done really well at winning uh, winning the game that I was playing, but it was at that moment where I, I opened myself up to maybe there's another game. And then when I started to learn, there was many other games. Um, I, uh, I, I, I went through the, a different, I walked a different path of mm -hmm. development and that led me to where I am today, which is living the life that I actually desire, the one that I want to live, the one that I wake up excited to be in, uh, love being alive. And um, despite all of the things that I had back then, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. It was like, I, I still wasn't joyful. I still wasn't happy. I still wasn't fulfilled with life. And so um, now... Uh, that is the path that I walk others on. And oftentimes they're in a similar position or leading to a similar position than I was of learning lots, of working really hard, of, of oftentimes doing really well at that. Uh, and then just like that little hint of there's something more out there. There's something more. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this is a situation that many of us can relate to because this way of thinking and living of I want to achieve more and then the the barrier moves even further ahead and further ahead and it's uh, in a in a way I have to say it's great that you realized it at at 30 because yeah. many people it takes them a long time to realize that it's adding a, another zero on your bank account is not going to change internally mm -hmm. <laughs> the satisfaction you feel with uh, with your life mm -hmm. and uh, i liked very much you said something about at that time you followed a different path of development mm -hmm. so because mm -hmm. you were obviously very successful you were developing doing your goals and everything and then you took a different path that's the phrase you used mm -hmm. and you also said the beautiful phrase gui uh, guiding your life from your heart so mm -hmm. do you want to uh, tell us about this period then what what happened afterwards when you realized that wow this is not it there must be something else out there uh, mm -hmm. which direction did your learning take you and what did you do with your previous uh, you know your businesses and so on yeah, great question. It was a rocky time. <laughs> it was it was rocky. Um, yeah, I um, it, it, that uh, realization was uh, the gasoline that was poured on that fire was was actually travel for me. Mm -hmm. It was right around that time I took a really long extended honeymoon. It was the first travel I had done. I first time I left my my businesses for that long we went for eight weeks to australia and new zealand and um it was such an amazing trip for multiple reasons but one thing i didn't realize how impactful uh, it was to me until later on in my journey but the process of being around people mm -hmm. who who didn't necessarily have a lot of wealth and they didn't necessarily have the the job that like was up on the top 10 jobs list at school. Yeah. Um, but they just were so happy and they loved what they did. I'm, I'm going to use an example. Like we were doing whitewater rafting and the guide was just lit up to tell us about his hometown and like this mountain and this. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, and I love just doing this every day. And like, I was, I was, there was a, I remember being on the raft. I'm like, I'm like, like, this is what I've been missing in my life. It's this pure passion. Yes. Um, 
And I saw so much of that. I saw it from these, these travelers who were just on a, on a year sabbatical and they were just, uh, finding out more about themselves in this in this travel experience than, than all the books that they read back home. And um, I, it was when my eyes started to open to maybe this way of life of just accumulating the zeros and the things and the plastic and the this and the titles, maybe that's not actually what this is about. And maybe I want a little bit more of this. Mm-hmm. And so at, when I got back from that trip, I didn't just completely change everything, but I knew that I wanted a little bit more of that and a little bit less of what I was doing, which was just putting my head down. It was just putting my head down and just working hard. And, um, and you know, I, I, that was the model that I had. I, I, most of my family on, on both sides came from immigrant families. Mm -hmm. And it was just about like, you got to work hard if you want to be successful in this Mm -hmm. American dream, which meant Mm -hmm. money. Um, cause money equals freedom for a lot of people, um, until you make a little money and you realize that that's not actually the answer. Um, it can, I think it's an important part of the journey, but there's a moment once you've made the money that you realize that that's just the, there's a step after that and there's a step after that and there's a step after that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, travel really, really helped with that. Um, and so when I got back, I was just committed to more time for me. Mm-hmm. And um, every time I, 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 I would go a trip camping in the woods for a weekend, every time I would go back, come back, I was more lit up. I was more myself. I was more joyful. I was a better boss. I was a better partner. Um, and also I loved it. <laughs> so I just started taking more, more time off and, and um, business kept doing better. My employees got to be empowered rather than me micromanaging them being in everything every day. Mm -hmm. And then, um, eventually it was, it was catalyzed by, I I had this life dream to travel the country in an RV and, um, I, I wanted to, to take six months off. And so, um, that was enough of a drive for me to, um, honestly make it a reality. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I spent a year like, talking about it and talking about it. I was like, guys, I'm going to be leaving next June or next April. It's happening. I'm leaving. And then, uh, next April came and and I left and, um, and my, my managers ran the businesses and, um, you know, things didn't go, uh, amazingly, but it was that decision to choose me over choose, just continuing to put my head down. Mm -hmm. That was, like that was the first time I really took a stand for myself. It was something I deeply wanted to do. And the old me would have just kept putting it off and just another year. Oh, I got to make a little bit more money. I got to figure this other thing out. But that moment I was like, Hey, it's not perfect, but it's never going to be perfect. I'm going to do this because this is what I want to do right now. And, um, honestly, the, the words, everything is going to be okay. Just Mm -hmm. kept coming to it. It's like, everything's going to be okay. And then when I took that decision for myself, it was like this empowering moment where I realized, Oh, wow. All of these decisions that I've been making that I've been scared of what's going to happen. Everything's going to be okay. And you know what? I can keep making these decisions for myself. And then I just one decision after another, I kept choosing what I wanted, what my heart wanted. And, um, yeah, it got me, got me to the place of eventually, yeah, mm-hmm. eventually um, selling my house, uh, selling the businesses that I had built. And that was one of the most uh, challenging times for me. I also ended up separating from my wife at the time. And uh, it was like every single piece of my identity, every title, every label, everything that I, if you ask me who I was, I would say husband, business owner, entrepreneur, and uh, yeah, whatever coach. Um, they were all titles, and in 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 a very short amount of time, I just removed all of them, or they got removed for me, and it forced me to figure out like, oh, who am I actually without mm-hmm. all these defining things? Mm-hmm. And um, that's when I basically started to put the. Chris, you see today together and, um, 
get to get to build the person I wanted rather than the person uh, that I got handed when I was born into a certain family in a certain country in a certain mm-hmm. community. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is. Uh, thank you for sharing that, and it's very uh, fascinating for me, uh, particularly, and I think for many uh, people, these mm-hmm. identities that uh, we carry along, and it's difficult to break free and do something else because the uh, the old identity is hanging. Whether it is that I'm a, a professional, or that I'm a, a dad, or a husband, or uh, I'm Greek or whatever it is that uh, you identify yourself uh, with. Um, I want to ask you about this um, deeper than journey uh, into, because there are, and I'm I'm going to say again what we discussed earlier, that uh, there was a different path of development. So this time the development is really going deep within and... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I read somewhere that you said that it was when you found the training camp for the soul that something mm-hmm. very yeah. big changed. So do you want to, mm-hmm. to share that milestone for, for me as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that actually leads me to my rock bottom story where where even though I had, I had taken the decision to go out on that RV trip, um, that was while I was out and doing that and doing this, this desire of mine, things in my old life were starting to fall apart. Cause like I had gotten so good at like propping everything up and micromanaging it that um, without me there, think dominoes were starting to fall. Mm. And I remember things weren't great, but I was happier. Like things weren't great by material uh, standards and like my goals weren't being met from the way that I saw them before, but like I was just happier and I was lighter mm-hmm. and, um, and, and I knew that I was onto something, but there was a moment where I was, I was driving home. We were finishing up one leg of the RV trip and we were going to go home for a little bit. And uh, I remember crossing over the, the Georgia, Florida border in the U S I was driving home to Florida and I just started crying because I had this realization that I didn't actually want to go home to this life that I had built. All these things that I had built, I was proud of it and I loved it. I loved the people, but I didn't want to go home to it. And that internal conflict didn't make any sense in my mind. Mm. And so I felt like a terrible person because of that. I was like, so many people would would die to have the life that i have but i'm not happy Mm. and that that broke me down inside and i pulled over and i just teared and teared and teared for probably 15 minutes and uh, my wife at the time was there and she had just uh, she was in the middle of training camp for the soul we actually met the founder and not who's now my business partner uh, we, we met her and we got on the phone with her and um, she was a full yes, my, my uh, former wife. And I was so skeptical because my mind was still in this, uh, this business, this masculine, this controlling. I had to understand what was next. Mm-hmm. And what she kept saying is that like, what's next for you is unknown because you haven't even touched it yet. And, and that like, didn't sit well with me. I was like, no, I have to know. I I have to know. (laughs) And, um, and so I, I resisted, but, but, uh, my wife, uh, she decided to do the program and she was getting such beautiful results. She was growing. She was happier. She was lighter. And, and I'm, I'm sitting over here, I'm crying, I'm tearing. And I just had this realization is like, maybe I don't have all the answers. Maybe I'm not going to know what's next. Maybe it's time for me to be supported and not just pretend like I have it all together. Uh, Because that's what I was doing. I was just pretending that I had it all together uh, for my ego's sake. And uh, as soon as we got home, I got back on the phone with a knot and I did, um, I signed up for the next round of training camp for the soul. And I did that January, 2019. Um, and then life just started to change. And, and I, I, I took the gift of working really hard that I had learned my whole life, 
But rather than applying it outward, like I had always been, I applied it inward. And so I was just like, oh, I'm going to use the gift of this and I'm going to work really hard on my internal self. And everything that I would do is like, okay, like, what do I want here? Like, what can I do for myself here? What can I do to improve here? Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I got really good at, um, like they say, every time you point the finger outwards, there's three pointing back at you. I, I looked in the mirror at every opportunity and that was really uncomfortable <laughs> because anytime something went wrong in a business, in a relationship, in my life, I got used to just saying, okay, this sucks, but what's my role in this? Mm -hmm. uh, what did I, what, I, what did I do here? Or what mm -hmm. can I do going forward? And, um, it, it led to a lot of like, like really hard shots to my ego, but I'm glad it happened that way because it, you know, we, we, the common denominator in our lives and everything that happens in our lives is us. And so if we're always looking, <laughs> we're missing the boat. And so <laughs> by doing that, by looking at me and looking at what my role was in, all, in my life, I got to really quickly change a lot of things by looking at the root of the problem, which was this guy right here. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it led me on a really, really beautiful journey over the next two and a half years. And mm -hmm. I, I ended up, um, as I sold my businesses, I got the opportunity to use my 10 years of entrepreneurial gifts to support a knot now. And now I was helping her with her business and, and, and growing that. And then eventually we, we started facilitating together and then I took over as CEO and then I became her partner. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was this, like, uh, it keeps, uh, the universe keeps showing me this evidence that, uh, like everything that I learned to this point, it wasn't wasted time it's just another step. It's just another step. And so um, I think that that's the biggest challenge with people when it comes to shifting identity mm -hmm. is they think that by setting this part of themselves down or breaking this down, all that time was wasted. And so it's, that's a hard thing to admit that like, oh, 40 years of my life is down the drain. Yes. But it's not. It's only if you say it is. It's not. It's it, like there's so much learning in that. And there's so many gifts in that. Mm -hmm. And um, when we start seeing it that way, it's like, oh, I can move forward now knowing that I can learn from my past. And, and I, don't, I don't just have to repeat those things over mm -hmm. again. That's uh, that's amazing and uh, actually leads me very nice to uh, ask you about you now actually facilitating this process for for others so i wanted to ask you uh, let's start there are so many things but let's start mm -hmm. with uh, the healing work that you do and i mean mm -hmm. the emotional uh, healing mm -hmm. uh, there is something that uh, you say that Got my attention. You say that you you give people permission to be their most authentic uh, self because this is the first uh, step towards healing. If if mm -hmm. I understand that correctly, mm -hmm. so I want you to uh, explain that to me. Uh, what yeah. what is holding people back? Why why do I need your permission to be my authentic self? Yeah, I love that question. Um, the the way that I'll uh, describe it is like the you know those little Russian dolls where there's like one inside of the other yes. inside of the other, and a lot about who we've designed designed ourselves to be in this world is like those Russian dolls, is at our very core it's it's the most authentic version of us and it's like right in our center right in our heart, it's it's uh, we get glints a lot of us get glimpses of it sometimes when we're doing what we love or we're lit up or we're um, or we're following our life's path or, or maybe we have a, a peak experience where we're just, uh, we get to be fully ourselves. And, um, and then we are afraid uh, a, a lot of times of, of judgment or what will happen if we be ourselves. And so we, we, there's like these layers that we put on top and some people call them masks. Some people call them walls. Some people call them, it's literally like you're putting on, these different suits to be a person uh, in this world. And it's all for protection um, because that little inner self is really vulnerable. 
and it's afraid. It's, it's afraid that it's not going to be accepted by the tribe for being who they are. And so they pretend to be someone else to fit in, or they pretend to be liked by this person. Um, and they're all just defense mechanisms, protection. And we've gotten so used to uh, living in those protective mechanisms mm -hmm. that we oftentimes forget we're doing it. Most people forgot. It's so unconscious that they forgot they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so the process that I say of like giving people permission to be their authentic selves is, is a new concept. And so when I tell someone like everything is welcome here, all parts of you are welcome here. You can express however you want to express, like it's okay to be you, things like that. And then really helping them feel safe in that is maybe the first time in their life that, um, uh, especially like um, I use men in, as, as an example, it's really common that, that men are taught to suppress their emotions. They're taught that crying is weak. They're taught that anything outside of like this stoicism, like keep it all together is, is, is soft and you're not a man at that. And so it's, it's silly because we all have these emotions running through us. And when I just give people the permission to be like, yeah, well, like, let it go. It's cool. Like, I'm not going to judge you for that. Like I, I, I have been, I, I've seen this enough times. Like we're all the same. Like we're all going through the same version of our own internal battles. We all have an internal battle. It just has a different flavor than mine, but like, I feel you like I do. And it's the, and, and I think the, um, I, I, uh, I'll give myself a little bit of credit. I think I do it so authentically and openly that people trust it. They're like, oh, he's not just lying to me. He like really won't judge me if I be myself. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, like, I want to see more of you. In fact, it's not just, uh, it's like, please, like, please show me who you are. And that is a very freeing experience for a lot of people because most of their life has been spent pretending to be someone that they're not to fit in to people that really that <laughs> doesn't even matter if they, <laughs> like, yeah it doesn't matter and so that permission especially with with men is so important and i think a lot of men uh look up to me and a lot of the the material success uh world and they look up to like what i've accomplished mm -hmm. and so it's easy for them to say okay maybe like uh, this guy isn't just a hippie living in the mountains and he, or, or like whatever, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to operate in both worlds. I'm learning how to feel everything on the inside and feel amazing and lit up and joyful and feel all the emotions. And I'm also learning how to operate in this, this material world we live in and, mm -hmm. and also have all those things that I want. And so um, it opens up the door for them to be like, okay, I think I can trust this guy a little bit. <laughs> And it, it has certainly it has given you the credibility for someone mm -hmm. that has been that is, for example, a successful businessman that mm -hmm. is completely, uh, let's say, detached from his inner world. And yeah. I think that's a very common description of many people mm -hmm. out there. Uh, going back to what you were saying about putting more and achieving more and uh, and realizing at some point that this there's no end to this there's, yeah. there's always someone that's going to have more than us no matter <laughs> how much we try uh, yeah. and so it's it's uh, i like your analogy of the the russian dolls and how <laughs> all the, i have known it as layers of clay but it is it's it's, uh -huh. it's, it's great there is a treasure or a gem inside mm -hmm. uh, our core which uh, we have forgotten um Chris, there is, I uh, there are some uh, more specific things I wanted to ask you about, and sure. I have a personal uh, interest in them. I see that you use very uh, many different modalities to to facilitate uh, mm -hmm. that process, which I mentioned a few of them earlier in the introduction, I think. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple that I would like to go a little bit deeper, and uh, one of them was breath work. And actually, I will start with this because uh, uh, it is something that personally I use. I use a, a version of the Wim Hof breathing and I do that mm -hmm. 
every day, especially lately, it's part of my daily routine. And I know because mm-hmm. I feel wonderful after that. Mm-hmm. I feel calm, I feel energized. So do you want to share a little bit of the role of breath work in your in this process of emotional healing mm-hmm. and uh, transformation? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's one of the ones that I'm very passionate about and uh, and I'm also really good at and it also happens to be that it's getting really popular, which mm-hmm. is a good mix of things. Um and the role that it has is the way I think about our breath is that it is the switch for our nervous system. And our nervous system is the most important factor in how you feel, how your body operates, how essentially how you live is how your, your nervous system is operating. And um, I'll, I'll do a brief overview. Our nervous system, we have two nervous systems, our sympathetic nervous system. This is what's designed to be our uh, stress response nervous system. It's like um, when we need it, it's supposed to turn on so that we can get a a big burst of energy. All our uh, senses are heightened. It's like if we were being chased by a wild animal and we've got to escape. As soon as that threat is gone, we are supposed to switch over into our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest, our relax, our digest, our heal. It's, It's our resting state. Um, it, it's, it's the state that, um, most, uh, animals, <laughs> predatory animals, um, which, <laughs> which we are, <laughs> we don't have natural predators, um, it, which most predatory animals, uh, live 90% of their lives in. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look at a, a pride of lions on, on the, whatever Savannah, they're, they're laying around, they're resting most of the day, mm-hmm. they're digesting, they're playing. Uh, it's very light. And as humans, um, we forgot, uh, I think we forgot, or we just weren't taught how, or mm, we know naturally how to do it, but uh, we've convinced ourselves that we don't need to mm. switch back over to the parasympathetic. Yes. Um, and so much about our lifestyle it glorifies the sympathetic, which is this really heightened, really on, really like super laser focus and wound up. It's, it's like more coffee, more stimulants, more of this, it's more work, <laughs> but it's less sleep. It's less rest. It's no, <laughs> and um, we've, we've glorified it. And it's um, like in the natural world, it's not a, it's not a healthy or sustainable way of living. <laughs> it's it's actually the cause for the majority of the diseases of our society mm-hmm. is because our systems are designed to recover and rest and repair from the damage that we're doing. Yes. Life is all about this little bit of damage and then it heals and we grow back stronger and then a little bit of damage and it heals and we grow back stronger and we can keep stressing it only if we continue recovering, but we've gotten so good at like, Oh, we can just keep going. And for a time, that's true. When you're young, that's true. Cause you're just chipping away. You're chipping away, you're chipping away, chipping away. And it's never actually recovering. And then one day, boom, we get hit with the life threatening d- disease or the body just stops working and we just ch- chalk it up to like, Oh, this is natural old age. And it's not, we're not designed to deteriorate mentally and physically the way that most people are, but we've just accepted it because we're, we're seeing it everywhere, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way because if we just learn to live in the natural rhythm of, okay, I need a little bit of rest. Now I need, I need to sleep a little bit more. I need to uh, not be so stressed in life, be be a little bit more relaxed and at peace. And, And getting back to your question, the breath is the quickest, it's the cheapest, it's free, uh, and it's the most effective way to get us from that super stressed state into the relaxed state. And we can do it in just a few moments. There's plenty of protocols that you can use. And like uh, Wim Hof was my, the first experience that I had or some version of it about eight or nine years ago. Mm-hmm. 
and I've just gotten um, really interested and infatuated with all these different modalities of breath works to do different things for our body. Some give us energy, some mm -hmm. calm us down, mm -hmm. some help us to heal. Um, and the breath, it's the, it's one of the few functions that we can, uh, that, that runs whether or not we're conscious to it, but we can also direct it. Mm -hmm. It's both an unconscious and a conscious, and there's gotta be a reason for that. The natural design doesn't mess around, even if we don't understand it. And so it, it what I, the way I think about it is that we're designed to breathe consciously but even when we forget, it's gonna do it's gonna do it for us. Um, but we're designed to breathe consciously. So once you become conscious to like, oh, I'm stressed out, I'm overwhelmed, I'm in, I'm really emotional right now, and I'm uh, just come back to your breath, slow it down, take a deep breath in, let it out, do that five more times, do that ten more times until you feel your body actually relax and the more stressed you are the longer that may take but um it's certainly healthier and better than uh, popping a, a pill like uh, and unfortunately mm -hmm. i was thinking of that when you were saying about the constant stress uh, stressors and living mm -hmm. on the sympathetic all the time yes this yeah. is the, the number one cause of all chronic diseases that uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm. And I don't want to go down the, the path of yeah. traditional healing and how yeah. they completely uh -huh. ignore this and they only focus uh -huh. on the symptoms. <laughs> There I said it, so now I can yep. carry on. <laughs> I can, carry on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there is actually, uh, yes, I will carry on. Thank you for <laughs> this with the breathing and uh, it's fascinating. Uh, there is mm -hmm. another modality that uh, you use and... I really want to discuss this with you because I think it's uh, important and that is the inner child work. Thank you for listening to this first part of the truly intriguing conversation with Chris Marhevka. In the second and conclusive part, Chris talks about the inner child work, the difference between men and women in their personal development and One of the most important topics, understanding and managing our emotional state. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share this episode with someone who you think will benefit from it. If you want to find out more about what I do and gain access to exclusive content, go to my website, personaldevelopmentmasterypodcast.com. You will find the link in the show notes. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in, 